Guten Tag, fine tank people of YouTube. Um, I was, uh, I got, I got these, uh, little swing arms done on all the road wheels. The paint job's not perfect. Oh, definitely now it's definitely not perfect. Um, it's really just there for something for the regular, to me, a primer to stick to a little better. I don't love it. I mean, this thing's been drying for 24 hours almost, and it's still a little, you know, it just feels tacky. Whatever. I don't care. Tacky is my middle name. Um, no, it's not. Ugh. Okay, so I was just getting, I'm getting a little, uh, return rollers bolted onto the, the lower hull here. They're friggin' amazing. They were cool already. Not just because of the rubber tires. And this tank will be 100% rubbered. It will, yeah, fully rubbered. All rubbered. Every possible wheel that could have rubber on it, as far as I'm aware, has rubber on it. Okay, unless there's a spare tire they're hiding somewhere, which we can't see. Um, yeah, other than the actual main gear sprocket, everything, rubber tires, I'm so happy. Either way, these were already pretty cool from King Kong RC, with the little machined aluminum jobbies. They're very, very nice. And then I took one apart to just tighten up some of these little bolts just in case. And I don't know if you can see that, but they have itty litty little bitty roller bearings inside these tiny little wheels. All they really needed was a good shouldered screw or a bushing. No, they have ball bearings in there. That's insanity. The attention to detail on these is utterly beautiful. Plus, the way they actually attach to the lower hull, as far as I'm aware that in the Tamiya instructions, you're just gluing those suckers on there and hoping, hoping they hold. Um, these guys actually bolt right through. There's holes in this lower hull to accommodate uh, these specific return roller mounts. And they have a washer and a lock nut. The lock nut I'm only using on the short arms because they have a large hole for some reason. And, uh, man, those things are... They're on there solid. You know, they spin really nice. This one's not quite as smooth as the others. Um, but it's still... Ultra smooth. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna peel. Oh, and these rubber tires. These suckers are. These are really on there. They're nice. I mean, they're molded and everything. They have the you know the. They have the little you know center hump lip ish area. So I mean, damn, these things are legit. These are nice. I'm gonna take all the rubber tires off of these also. I'm gonna take the rubber tires off my front idler wheels. I'm going to, you know, get everything out in the driveway on the uh, painting table. And, oh, I don't think that, I hope those, that doesn't translate to YouTube. Otherwise, you just heard me, heard me toot, toot, toot from the magical fruit area. Um, yeah, we're going to get these bolted on here. I mean, that ain't bad, guys. That, those are beefcake. Those are lovely. And instead of gluing, like the factory instructions, the little plastic, you know, and they use their ABS on ABS. I mean, it's, a, you know, CA glue. If you used, you know, actual, like, ABS plumber's weld glue, um, it'd probably hold pretty well. But, I mean, jeez. You can carry groceries with this thing. Um, yeah, let's get the rest of these bolted on here. And then we will be... Uh, going ahead and uh, priming all this stuff, and I'll be back once that is done. Uh, okay, don't, yes, keep your panties in a bunch for just a second. Okay, um, so the, uh, the wheels and swing arms are outside, and who needs a paint oven when you live in Georgia in August? Um, it is August, yes it is. Uh, oh boy, I mean it's really humid outside, so it'll take a while. I did the chassis tub with all those things in the green crap. It's going to be sticky, icky, icky. Um, I went straight to me a gray primer on the front idler wheels. I just, I mean, the brass and the, the little idler, I, I'm not worried about those getting hit that hard all the time. Uh, the chassis tub I did did in the uh, did in this, uh, this, this extra stinky zinc primer. The second I open the damn garage door, what comes in? A friggin' wasp comes in. You came into the wrong garage, buddy. I just, I, I probably got overspray all over my pickup truck. Hopefully it flash dried in the air, and I can just dust it off later. Otherwise, I'm getting the clay bar out. But 
I I sprayed that little sucker pretty good with with the zinc phosphate. Uh, he didn't seem to like it. He was looking for an exit strategy immediately once he entered the cloud of green death. <coughs> I might, <coughs> might have breathed a little myself. Um, so while everything's drying, I figured I'll get to building these shocks. They're pretty, they're fairly intricate. So um, we got we got a piece uh, B11, and then a little shafty thing he goes in there, a little springy thing he goes in there. Um, according to these directions and uh, we put that in there and we put the little spring in there and then I'm supposed to take C4 and B14 so here's a C4 oh my gosh yeah that looks that looks fun um, let's see now this is uh, this is uh, what you call it uh, ABS to ABS. So we're gonna we're gonna put we're gonna put this backstop part on top of this first and glue this down with it with uh, some CA glue. We're gonna do that first and then we'll fit this little guy in there. Oh boy! Yeah, these are. I mean, shh. come on, Hong Kong RC. Why do you make these things out of aluminum? That would be awesome. Oh my god, it would be so cool. So, a little CA on there. Try not to glue your fingers together, guys. I mean, we've seen it in my previous videos. I have a knack. I have a knack for that. I'm, oh, it takes... You know what? You know what I love about the Tamiya Instant Cement? It's just practically instant. Super glue is, is, is not the most super thing in the world. Um, it's alright. We got that there. And then we're supposed to then glue this guy down. So we're going to put a little 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 dab of CA here. Are we in frame? Yeah, barely. I mean, oh, I got too much on there. You can suck it back up if you are careful. Otherwise, uh, we'll just... We'll just wipe a little away. There we go. That's that's more than enough, I think. We got our little spring inside there with the shaft, and we're just gonna slide her into place. Okay, and we will gingerly <coughs> leave her right there. I may add a dab, a dab of CA, like in the little joint area here, just for good measure. And right there. And then, as far as gluing these to the aluminum uh, lower hull, um, is, and we're dealing with metal now for the lower hull instead of ABS. So CA uh, probably will be okay. I don't think these things are taking too much of a hit. If not, I may have to... Uh, I really need to get one of those cool light boxes off of Amazon. It's like 50 bucks or less. I just got to order a light box. I need, it's it's actually the big umbrella with the boom and the lamp. and You know what goes into making these YouTube videos? It's surprisingly, you really don't know how unprepared you are until you start doing them. Um, so, yeah. So that guy's going to dry up. I'm trying to keep these separate. There's two that are unique. Um, uh, here and here and here, and then there's four of each of these other ones, so, you know, I got the parts lined up, so they, they stay unique, I'm gonna get the rest of these built, and, uh, we'll be back after the listening to, jeez, man, this 2000s alt station starting to wear on me, I, I think I might need some Prozac by the time I'm done with this tank if I keep listening to this music, I may switch back to my old standard of, of you know, classic rock, I just like it better, I just... Or just just put on maybe just a nice a nice Fleetwood Mac station something something easy, but I'm trying to live the early 2000s again here, um, remembering a lot of oof, a lot of bad relationships or meals or being pulled over by cops a lot for no good reason I guess I don't know, They're doing other stupid things I guess, but either way we're having fun now we're not doing anything. 
Well, <laughs> yeah, we're not doing anything stupid. We're blowing all sorts of money to build our little RC tanks, so just the few little group of us could be all geeking out over each other's stuff. It's well, what constitutes a waste of money these days? I mean, turning on the lights? I don't know. You, you talk to some of those people, they're like, oh, I'm off the grid. I don't have a light. I'm by solar and uh, I do I have a water well and oh. Who wants to go off the grid, guys? You all with me? My off the grid will be protected by sustainably recharged Tamiya RC battle tanks. That's it. That's that. That is my my guard. All right, I'm getting weird now. Hold on, I I'm changing music before I come back. This is just it, this is unsustainable. I can't do it. Or I'm gonna switch to a different 2000s genre. I'd rather go back to Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys than any more of this. I talk to you about suicide. Oh, I don't know. Feed me lies from the tablecloth. I have no idea what they even mean. Uh, it's very weird. But we'll be back with a whole bunch of built shocks. Okie dokie. Welcome back, campers. Okay, we got a lot of shocks built. Um, they're pretty cool. They squeezy. They squeezy. The little shaft goes in and out just like you want. And they're nice. Um, it is It is now almost time to feed the beast. I'm not talking me. I'm talking little, little, little puppy Groot. His appetite is only exceeded by his cuteness and his obnoxiousness. Um, so yeah, all these fellows are built. Um, again, uh, the, the zinc primer, this stuff takes forever to dry. It's also, it's Georgia. It's humid. It's sticky as hell out. So none of this stuff's drying really quickly. I'm going to take a little break from shooting this video, um, but I'll be right back. I mean, this is going to be the same episode. And then we'll get, um, we'll start getting something going on here. I don't know. I got to still throw some gray Tamiya primer over this over the zinc coat on this, this lower chassis tub because this stuff is just, it's, I mean, it's green, but it's friggin' gross. I want to dust it with some, some fine primer at least. Then we'll, uh, then we'll get all the bearings and, uh, uh, torsion bars and everything in. Hopefully we have this page done uh, by the end of this episode. That's my goal for today. Alright? I'll be right back, guys. Oh, I gotta hit pause on the camera. It's gonna be noisy. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, guys. If you guys haven't air fried a really good hamburger yet, you should try that. So, uh... On my dinner hiatus, uh, feeding the dog and spilling the cat food everywhere, and oh my god, don't even start. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I got the uh, the lower hull. I got a Tamiya gray fine primer coat drying right now. It should be ready any minute now. I just wanted to go through because the next step here, we're going to start putting in the uh, the torsion bars. Now these are the stock Tamiya silver torsion bars, and these are the King Kong RC. Uh, torsion bars, and just from cursory flexing, they're pretty close. Um, the Hong Kong RC bar feels it just a tiny bit stiffer. I mean, you know, from you know the the torque meter in my thumbs is eh, 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 and then. Eh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the King Kongs are they're a tiny bit stiffer, probably because they figured if you, if you add everything they make to the tank, um, you'll end up with a slightly heavier tank and need a slightly heavier spring, which this makes makes sense. As now here's the race car suspension from uh, this is Don Gurney. It was a famous race car driver. I'm not sure it was Don Gurney. It was basically the rule for race car suspensions is as soft as as soft as possible, as firm as necessary. So if you can follow me, it should be just stiff enough, you know, to keep the car up off the ground and keep it from scraping, you know, diving through turns and all that. Um but soft enough that it doesn't unnecessarily beat up the driver. So NVH in tanks is a big deal, actually. Um, you know, they're, they're thinking about doing all rubber tracks or rubber, like uh, steel-belted rubber tracks, uh, kind of like re a regular car tire, 
to cut down on the NVH because apparently the vibration um, that tankers go through while riding in and or driving, operating a armored vehicle of any form, it's actually pretty bad. Uh, the amount of vibrations can actually cause permanent damage to the tankers. So that being said, uh, either way, uh, these springs definitely, yeah, if I, not a ton. I mean, I say definitely. I say they, ishy, yeah, they're a little stiffer. Plus, we spend money on these. Why not the hell use them? They're a little stiffer. Um, and this is a big tank, and I've added a bit of weight above what Tamiya designed. So a bit stiffer seems like the right amount of stiffer. Unless you ask her, and then there's no, no such thing as too stiff. Uh, <laughs> we're just dancing on a the line there of, of censorship in YouTube, I guess. Um, so we're going to use the thicker springs. Uh, I think my chassis tub is fairly dry. I've got it in front of the little fan. Oh, my garage just smells like chemical pleasure here. Um, we've got plenty of machine screws to bolt all these little torsion springs down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start installing all of these torsion springs, I guess. Oh, well, at first the little torsion spring holders and bearings, and then these are already done, of course, and those are already bolted on. And the torsion springs, yeah, there we go. That's what we're doing, guys. BRB. All right, guys. <clears throat> if you're buying this metal chassis, and, you know, I made a pig's ear of the paint. It's just primer. Um, you might not want to get any paint in these uh, bearing races here on the chassis. Um, oh, man, they machine this thing really close. So I'm using one of the little uh, swing arm uh, spring holder axle things. Oh dear, what happened? Oh, that shouldn't have happened. That just went right through. Oh, fudge! Yeah, see? I just blew my bearing apart. Um, oh, son of a... Damn. Well, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's in pieces. That, she's done. So, yeah, cheap Chinese bearings. Um, so what I was saying, oh my god, I thought I was doing the right thing. I did this for all of these. I've been, I'll, I'll find another one of these bearings. I'm sure I have one somewhere. Uh, but that being said, I've been, I've been tapping them in because I got, you know, uh, zinc phosphate and primer in there. I'm just going to tap them much more lightly moving forward. And I use this little guy to knock them in because it has the little lip on it. Um, yeah. Wow. What do you know? So I'm just tapping them in. And then, uh, man. It <laughs> figures it happens the second I start filming a tip on not painting inside these openings. If you're doing the machined chassis top, if you're doing the plastic one, I really don't know. <clears throat> they probably slip in a little easier, even with a coat of primer. Oh, God. All right. I've I've got to find a... Uh... Oh, God. i got to find a spare bearing again. Not the first time, not the last time. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, this is a little confusing. This is what happens when you get into aftermarket parts. I, I found a spare bearing to throw in. <laughs> Actually, secret. <laughs> One of these things... All of these have three bearings each, except one has two bearings and a bushing. And I put, I put the bushing in the middle. So it's it's less... I didn't have... I always seem to have a spare bearing. Just not for this particular size. So, the Tamiya kit parts are V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I have through 14. Um, the Hong Kong RC come with a bunch of V9s, like I said, V9, they laser etch it, no, they laser etched all six of these V9, and all six of this side, V2, and then this is V1, and, um, and this is V8, and no, it's not the tomato juice stuff, but, 
apparently, really, there was only a couple of unique shapes, and I guess Hong Kong RC simplified that design. I, I'm going to get under the camera. I'm sorry. It's the only way I can do this. Um, we're going to get this guy. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Son of a... Get in there. And I'm also thinking... If you're doing this with the plastic bits, there's a little more give and flex, and things are probably going to pop in easier. There we go. All right. Um, they're probably going to go in a little little easier. Um, I'm missing... There we go. And then, you know, basically, as long as... As long as the angle of the dangle here points that way backwards and slightly down, you're good to go. Uh, but you just have to keep that in mind. Oh, here's my shattered bearing, which is little drip, just dripping little tiny balls everywhere. Uh, rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Um, and then once you get that in its in its home, then we just go, we go and throw in a. Uh, throw in a torsion spring. We have the aluminum caps from King Kong. And since we're doing metal, 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 I, I don't care. I'm just using these flathead screws. I don't care. They're M3. They're machine screws. There we go. Um, yeah, those are, those are, those are sweet. Those, those go down nice. So, <clears throat> actually, this one didn't really bottom out fully. I don't know why. It might be a slight machining difference in the depth of the threads they cut, potentially. Um, let me try a little shorter of a screw. At least I think a shorter of a screw. And try that. Let's see. So yeah, little little things. I mean, you're working with aftermarket parts. There we go. Alright, she's good. Um, yeah, just, just, just a little weirdness going on there. So the, yeah, they're not V1 through V14, it's V2, V9, V1, and V8. Apparently they figured, well, there's only four unique parts, why do we need to do them all? And that's what they did. So just, just giving you that heads up in case you do the Hong Kong. Uh, I'll be back once I have a little more progress here. Holy crap! Oh my god, I just realized I can actually turn my GoPro camera on and off via the app when the app's working. Maybe that's why the app's not working right for me, because I've been turning the camera off manually. Um, let me adjust. Uh, you know, to save battery life. But apparently the camera never turns off fully. It's always on the Wi-Fi. It's an IoT device. Internet of Things. I hate that term. I've been in IT for 20 years. I hate that term. It's so... It's just annoying. I don't know. It feels patronizing in some way, shape, or form. Either way... Voila! Torsion spring goodness. <clears throat> now, it's really weird. On uh, one side, I was able to basically use all these uh, M3x8s. And then the other side, uh, I needed shorter screws, like M3x6s. It just, it wasn't quite, I don't know. It Aftermarket stuff is never a perfect science. Uh... I'm assuming, basically, you know, they, they took some sort of molding or casting or whatever of the original Tamiya hull and did their best to reproduce it as exact as they could. And they did a damn good job overall, but it's just a little a little wonky here and there. Nothing unsurmountable. Insurmountable? Unsurmountable? I don't know. One of those two words. But, um, yeah, she's all together. All our little guys are pointing backwards and slightly down, as they should. Uh, the front one more so than the other ones. That Because these two were unique. There was like a V1 and a V8, and then V2, and then V9. It is what it is, guys. I mean, you know, you go aftermarket, that's what you get. It's a, it's a really nice chassis. I mean, and these... these oh, these, these return rollers are beautiful. They're nice. They're metal. They and they're they're tough as nails. I mean, you could you could. They're not coming off, not easily. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure on video I'll break it if I really tried. 
But either way, that's looking good. All of our little shocks are ready to go on. Um, but the problem is, this paint needs time to cure. I really can't glue things onto it until it's fully cured, because they might just peel right off. That being, even, even when it's cured, I may not want to use CA glue. I might want to go with some two-part epoxy type glue. So, I'm going to end this episode for tonight. I'm going to go outside and collect all my road wheels and swing arms and, and uh, return rollers and their swing arms. And I'm going to go get all those parts. I'm going to bring them in, put them s nice and snug and tight in their little garage bedroom. And uh, we're going to pick back up on this on the next part of this build series. But there we are so far. Um, this... There's three big bearings per hub here. Three. 42 bearings or something like that just for these axles. For these 14 axles, it's an insane amount of bearings. I mean, I'm impressed. Uh, well, it's minus one. There's a bushing hidden away in here somewhere in the middle. No one's ever going to know. No one's ever going to see. Well, you know, but you haven't seen. Maybe you saw. Depends how good the video quality is. Um... So, that's that. You know, doctors, surgeons, they leave things in people all the time. Oh, my God. Like, I fear having, like, when I was a kid, I had my appendix out, and, you know, they cut me open, man. They cut me open. They dug around for a while. You know, I had complications. They couldn't find my appendix. They were exploring for that appendix. They were like Christopher Columbus on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria going... Where the hell is the appendix? And they find, you know, Americas. And they're like, no, no, not appendix. And then they hit Florida. Like, ah, appendix. We found the appendix. And then they chopped Florida off. Then they sewed up the hole. And they got out of me. And I was laid up for like a week and a half after that. And you know what? Who knows? I mean, I got, I've, I've been through plenty of x-rays and, and TSA checkpoints. So if there was something funky in there, metal-wise, I would have found out by now probably. They'd been like, sir, can you step aside, please? I'm like, uh, what's the problem? There's something inside of you, sir. And I'd be like, well, are you sure there's something inside of me? Or is there something going to be inside of me? Like you with a rubber glove. Uh, sir... Please cooperate. Please don't make a scene. Oh, sure. No problem. I, I had appendix surgery in the Bronx when I was, you know, 13, 14. Uh, okay, sir. You can move along. Go right ahead. Go, go to your flight, please, sir. I, we're very sorry to have inconvenienced you. Exactly. Even the TSA knows. Doctors are leaving bits and pieces of tools and God knows what inside people. Uh, I digress. It's, it's my specialty. So that that's that. Um, we're gonna... Oh my god, the magnetic tray is just throwing all my little shocks at a... Okay, I'll figure those back out, I guess. I don't... Oh, guys, you know, all all in uh, the pursuit of your happiness, I go through this. So, that's where she's sitting for tonight. You guys, you have a great... What the hell day of the week is it? It's only Tuesday? Hey, what's tomorrow? Hey... Mike, 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 what's tomorrow? It's hump day! I just like saying it. I did it, I know, in the Jag, Jag Tiger unboxing. It was great. I love filming on Wednesdays. I, I do the hump day. Uh, somebody made fun of hump day today and then, like, put a, a meme of the hump day guy and then a picture of Quasimodo from the no, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame and the camel was just like, geez, didn't see that coming. Yeah. That was a good meme. You get to get yourself on Reddit there once in a while. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm checking out for the night. You have a good one. I'll see you on the flip side.